Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to do a quick video on how you can make patent art by searching on Google Patents and then downloading the file which you can then turn into a vector using Inkscape so that you can use that vector to engrave with Lightburn. Okay, so the first step that we're going to do is to go onto Google and we're going to search. I want to do a bicycle, old bicycle image. I like those, those images. I think they're cool. Uh, but whatever you're looking for, so you would type in for me, bicycle, patent, images. Now we can click on this images for whatever patent, right? There's all kinds of images that come up. You could even, you could expand that search and find even more. I like this blue one right here. And if you notice on these images, a lot of times there's already all the information that you need on here to find the actual patent. See, we have the number right here, 420.059. So that's really probably all we're going to need for this one. So the next step would be we go back to Google search and we put in Google Patent Advanced. And click on the first link here. And that'll take us to this page. On the left, you can put in search terms to help filter out the results if you don't have that informa much information for what you're looking for because there's a lot of patents and if you don't use this you'll probably never find your patent but since we know the number what was it again 420-059 we'll type in US 420-059 and there's the actual patent for that bicycle with that image we just saw. So now what we do is click on download PDF. It's going to open it in your browser. And you're going to have to click download again over here in the top right or save I should say. So we're going to save that. I've already done that. So we're going to save that image. And that's how you find your patents. Next I'll show you how to convert this to a vector so that it's going to be engravable in Lightburn. Okay, with Inkscape open, you're going to want to press Control O and wherever you downloaded your patent file to, you're going to want to open that. Now up here in the top left, you're going to want to click All because we only want that image or at least I do if you wanted all the images as you can see if you click through here it shows you all of the images that are in that PDF file I don't really want all that text I just want the bike picture for my project everything else just leave the same press OK that's going to open up a new Inkscape window with that file in it looks a little rough right now now what you're going to want to do is click on that file, then click Edit Pass by Nodes. Now go up to Path, Trace Bitmap. You might have to click it again. It's going to open that image up here on the right. I just leave these settings the way they are. The results seem to be pretty good. Then click Apply that's going to create the vector. Go back to select and transform objects. We're going to slide that off to the right. Now, you'll notice, and I don't know why it does this, when you click back on the other image it selects everything. So what you want to do is go up to object, ungroup, and do that one more time. Ungroup now you can select this one and press delete and that will just leave our vector that we want now if you select edit pass by nodes again it brings up and select our image it brings up all these nodes 
if you zoom in you'll notice there's a lot of artifacts here so now some people may want that like the look of that because it gives it that old photocopy look but I'm not really too too hip on those so I'm gonna get rid of all these spots and to do this you gotta kinda flip back and forth between select and tra transform objects and edit pass by nodes you, when you click edit pass by nodes that in, allows you to go in and select these nodes and then just delete them the ones you don't want so you go through and clean it up however you want by doing that sometimes it's hard to tell if it's actually something you want to keep so that's why you want to switch back to select and transform objects so you can get a look so I can tell all these little spots we don't want so click back and just select them all carefully and delete It might take some time, depending on the image, <clears throat> but it's pretty simple. Just go through here and delete all the unnecessary nodes. So I'm just going to do a rough cleanup on this. I'm not going to go through and bore you with me doing every single one like this big black part down here we don't want that so get rid of that get rid of that all right that's good enough for the for our purposes here maybe get rid of that last one up there now switch back to select and transform objects now what I found there's probably other ways to do this I'm not an expert with Inkscape this is just the way I've kind of developed my system <laughs> to be able to do it you're going to want to press control D and then drag that over I do it twice for this image press control D again slide that over now select edit pass by nodes once again over here on the left or on the right and I'm going to get rid of all the text and just leave the bike image. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to delete all of these nodes like this. Now you can select and transfer objects up here, but there's also a shortcut of just pressing S. So there we go with our image. Now I'm going to rotate this. Clicking on it twice brings up the rotate handles and I'm gonna hold control while I rotate so it stays level now on one of these other I'm gonna slide this over a little bit here first give us some room to work now on this one again I'm gonna select edit pass by nodes and the shortcut for that one is actually N and I'm gonna delete all of the nodes for the bicycle so that's just going to leave us our text and I'm actually going to do is I'm going to separate this text as well I'm going to get rid of this top part and that's just going to leave us with this down here now we can slide this over and position it where we want here you can also do this too select nodes if you want to just whoops just move part of it you could just select all the nodes and using the arrow keys you can position that if you want it a little more centered for instance and you don't want as much space so there we go so now we have this right here now we'll go back to this one and we're going to delete everything except for the top text so here we go delete all those switch back now we have this I'm going to move that into the appropriate position that I want and here we go 
No, you could take some time and align this up just exactly the way you want it. But just the, for this example, I'm just kind of doing it, you know, eyeballing it. Maybe move this over just a little. There we go. That looks good. Select it all and press Control G. Now it's all together. So you can save this file now as an SVG. I'm going to save it right here and I'm going to call this Bicycle Patent and save that. Now we'll be able to open it up in uh, Lightburn. All right, now in Lightburn, want to go over to File, Import, and navigate to the SVG file that we saved from Inkscape. Open. And now we want to set, get our settings. I went with 3500 and 55 percent power. I use 5 percent over scanning and my line interval is 0.08. Of course your settings will be different than mine and you should run a power scale test on whatever material you plan to engrave just to be sure. I'm doing mine on cedar wood. Okay. Preview. It's going to take 40 minutes and that's at a six by six and a half inch size. I'm actually going to make that smaller because my piece of wood I'm going to engrave in is only about five inches in height. So I'm going to reduce that down to right about there. It doesn't need to be an exact number for this. Now our preview. 24 minutes. That's that's not bad. And now I'll go engrave this on the machine and we'll see the results. In case you're wondering, this is being engraved with a Raleigh Lasermatic 10 and that's a 10 watt laser and the material is actually a cut off from a cedar fence plank that I planed smooth earlier. And here's what the finished engraving looks like. I think it came out pretty good. Um, maybe a little adjustment here and there on the settings if you want to get it just perfect. But it's a pretty cool thing. You can go on, like I said, on Google Patents and look up anything you can possibly imagine. And using the search function, be able to find uh, artwork that you can use for your engraving. And that pretty much brings this video to a close. I hope it was useful to somebody out there. And, you know, I really appreciate everybody who does watch my videos. And until next time. Take care.